This leads me to a question for you. Who do you put your faith and trust in when needing a miracle? Technology? Yourself? Others? Or are you like Hezekiah and put your trust in God? Welcome to Hezekiah's Tunnel, the featured attraction on our last day of touring. This location is one of the best examples of seeing the Bible come alive. Now, I will get into the biblical narrative in a moment, but first, I just want to talk about this tunnel constructed roughly 2,700 years ago. What is so special about this old 1,750-foot tunnel of water? The miraculous way it was constructed. Just like Nehemiah's wall I discussed in my last video review, Hezekiah's Tunnel is located in the city of David, which is where Biblical Jerusalem was located. The Gihon Spring was the city's water source, but it was located just outside the city walls. The Gihon Spring is also where King Solomon was anointed king, and this is the presumed spot where this anointing took place. Hezekiah wanted to divert the water from the Gihon Spring into the city walls to prevent an enemy from blocking off their water supply during a siege against the city. To get this tunnel completed as quickly as possible, Hezekiah commissioned two teams to start chiseling out the tunnel from opposite sides. The miraculous part, the two teams ended up meeting in the middle. This is a recreation of the Siloam inscription, which the original, now housed in Turkey, was placed in this tunnel to describe how it was built. It roughly translates, the tunnel, and this is the story of the tunnel, while the axes were against each other and while three cubits were left to cut. The voice of a man called to his counterpart, for there was Zada in the rock, on the right, and on the day of the tunnel being finished, the stonecutters struck each man towards his counterpart, axe against axe, and flowed water from the source to the pool for 1,200 cubits, and 100 cubits was the height over the head of the stonecutters. The pool mentioned here is the Pool of Siloam, which I will be reviewing in my next video. How did two groups chisel 1,750 feet through solid limestone from opposite ends and meet in the middle? Some will say this was accomplished by skilled craftsmen, others will guess that they used some kind of rock sounding techniques. And though this could be true, let's be very clear, this was ultimately done by the guiding hand of the Most High God. This leads me to a question for you. Who do you put your faith and trust in when needing a miracle? Technology? Yourself? Others? Or are you like Hezekiah and put your trust in God? See, King Hezekiah was one of the few great kings that was committed to God. Hezekiah trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel, and there was no one like him among all the kings of Judah, either before him or after him. He held fast to the Lord and did not stop following him. He kept the commands the Lord had given Moses. Now let's look at what was going on at the time of Hezekiah and why he had this tunnel built. The dominant power of the day was Assyria, who had already taken captive the northern kingdom of Israel. God allowed this to happen for their constant refusal to worship him as their one true God. At the end of three years, the Assyrians took it. So Samaria was captured in Hezekiah's sixth year, which was the ninth year of Hosea, king of Israel. The king of Assyria deported Israel to Assyria and settled them in Hala, in Gozan, on the harbor river, and in the towns of the Medes. Then Assyria began causing Judah trouble. In the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah's reign, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, attacked all the fortified cities of Judah and captured them. So with fear of an impending battle, Hezekiah devised the plan to keep the city's water supply from being captured. So he ordered the men to dig the tunnel under the city. It was Hezekiah who blocked the upper outlet of the Gihon Spring and channeled the water down to the west side of the city of David. He succeeded in everything he undertook. As for the other events of Hezekiah's reign, all his achievements and how he made the pool and the tunnel by which he brought the water into the city, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? This was just an amazing sight, for sure top five of all the places I visited, and to actually walk through the narrow tunnels of actual Bible history was just simply spectacular. This concludes my review of Hezekiah's Tunnel. I really hope you enjoyed it. In my next review, I will take you to where the water from the Gihon Spring dumped into, by way of Hezekiah's Tunnel, the Pool of Siloam. But until then, thank you for watching, and as always, God bless.